Hey there, welcome back to Bikes Online. Today, I've got something extra special for you. So picture this, I'm sitting on the couch, devouring a bag of popcorn, watching this new Netflix documentary called Unchained. It's all about the legendary Tour de France. And you know what? It hit me like a runaway cyclist. It's time for me, a die-hard mountain biker, to dip my toes into the world of road cycling. And since I'm a glutton for punishment, I'm thinking I should try to do a century ride for my first go. But before I go full speed ahead on my new road cycling adventure, I thought it would be great to share some informative tips I'll be doing to get prepared. So if you're ready to hit the asphalt with me, let's dive right in. To start off, you need a bike. I'll be riding my 2023 Polygon Helios A8X road bike, which is probably 10 times faster than me, but that's okay. With its UCI approved full carbon chassis, nifty DI2 electronic shifting, deep section carbon hoops, and a one-piece carbon cockpit, this thing is not playing around. Now let's get dressed for the occasion. We mountain bikers may be known for hairy thighs resembling tree trunks and dressing like Paul Bunyan, but road bikers typically sport a completely different sort of streamlined and sleek fashion of hairless bodies and body-hugging lycra. But for a first go, you don't necessarily have to shave every hair off your body, that is, unless you want to. As for your clothing, it's true that full lycra can reduce drag, but don't feel bad if you have to wear what you got. Just make sure that you have the appropriate safety gear, a helmet to protect your dome, maybe some glasses to protect your eyeballs, some gloves, a chamois with no boxes underneath you noob, and the right shoes. That's a great place to start. Next, let's cover nutrition and supplies. As much as I love packing enough supplies to feed a multitude in my pack, road cycling requires more calculated and light packing. Perhaps opt for a few gels and bars so you don't bonk, along with some electrolyte rich hydration. You should take on as much as your bike can carry, within reason of course. For supplies, it's best to have the most aerodynamic bag possible and fill it with essentials like a CO2 inflator, a multi-tool, a plug kit, as well as all of the snackies we just gathered. Now look at that, we're almost ready to roll. Now, finding a good route to ride is key. Road cyclists have a knack for discovering hidden gems, picturesque roads that seem like they're straight out of a fairy tale. So explore your local area, maybe join an online cycling community, and you'll be cruising through scenic landscapes in no time. We will be riding the 40 mile Razorback Greenway out and back with some extra mileage in the mix to get us to an approximate 100 mile route. Now for the last step, find folks to ride with. For me, that's going to be my fellow mountain biking YouTube buddy, Cobra Kyle. He will also be aboard a Polygon Helios. If you don't have an actual celebrity to ride with like me, you can always join local Facebook groups or something to that effect to find a pal. And there you have it, a road cycling prep course in a nutshell. In a perfect world, you would train to conquer a century ride for at least a month or so, but in our blissful ignorance, Kyle and I are diving right in, so let's ride. We had intended to get wheels on the ground at 5.30 a.m. so we wouldn't be out all day. Arkansas has a tendency to get really warm in the late afternoon and we wanted no part in that. We found out that there are some disadvantages in starting super early, including limited visibility as well as the possibility of fog. But for me, this added variety and a dreamlike surreal element to our adventure. By the time the sun was out, we were already about 20 miles in. Our bodies were warmed up and ready to tackle the next 80. As we continued to pedal throughout civilization, eventually it would become very obvious that we were far from home. Forests, farmlands, lakes, cityscapes, all of this I had never seen before. The amount of sights we would see along our way were innumerable. We made sure to stop every 10 to 15 miles to give our bodies the nutrition we had packed. As we continued to press on, Kyle and I were beginning to feel some fatigue in our hands since we aren't used to the road life riding position but it wasn't gonna stop us. We were really loving the wide open descents and the reward of earning those after a climb kept us itching for more. 55 miles into our journey, about as far as possible from home, I got a gnarly puncture. Fortunately, my onboard preparations were enough to hobble my bike to a local bike shop who would patch my tire and throw a tube in. This would give my bike and I the ability to cover the remaining 45 miles. Kyle's bike, for the record, had no issues. I was just the unlucky one. Now that we were over the hump and officially on our way back, we were already taking mental ownership of our victory. But was it too soon? We pedaled our hearts out, feeling more and more motivated as we recognized all of the landmarks we had passed earlier in our day. We met other friendly riders along the way who offered us their moral support as well as their draft. The fellow road cycling community we found was remarkably kind. 
safe to say this experience was changing our view on roadies for the better. As a whole, we agreed all of the disciplines of cycling are a lot less different than we think. We continued to make our way home collecting miles. 62, 75, 81, victory was imminent. Eventually, the sights of home began to arise. It was at mile 92 that we stopped at a familiar jump line that I session regularly. For whatever reason, this is when my body decided to signal to me that I had had enough. I hit a wall. My knees were killing me, and my motivation went to zero. Kyle, however, much like his bike, still felt just fine. Impressive. The remaining eight miles back to the house were the absolute hardest, but I had come so far, so there was no way I was going to throw in the towel. All things considered, I thought I would have hit a wall much sooner, so I'm still quite impressed with my performance since I basically had performed zero dedicated training for this ride. Eventually, by the hardest, we made it back to the house. That's when I checked my mileage and realized we had only accumulated 98.7 miles. Unacceptable. So to close it out, we just pedaled around the neighborhood to seal the deal. All right, folks, there you have it. I've done it. And it's Strava official. We've got 100.36 miles with 3,435 feet of climbing. This, uh, this Helios is quite the accomplice and I don't know, I guess I'm a road biker now. Um, obviously my knees are taxed. Um, I could use a really cold drink and a hot shower. And that's the end of my tale. So thank you all for joining me on this painstaking adventure. It's safe to say we pushed ourselves, made some great memories, and even learned some valuable lessons along our way. I believe that Kyle and I will be aboard our Polygon Helios road bikes much more than we originally anticipated for more adventures just like this. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you never miss another video. Until next time, keep spinning those wheels and chasing those dreams. I'm Jared with Bikes Online, and I'll see you around. I'm feeling jacked. He's feeling jacked. Absolutely jacked. You heard it here first.